Wow, wow. That is big monkey business. Hey everyone, I'm Lorenzo, and in this video, I'm going to talk about all King Kong games for the GBA. Kong the Animated Series is a tie-in game to the cartoon series. And just like the cartoon, the game isn't all that great. In the game you have to collect stuff, or just get to the end of a level, or collect a certain item. And I'm okay with that, if the game will tell me what I have to do. You get story cutscenes where the characters seem to be talking story related stuff, and they end up saying stuff like, there's something happening in the lab. And then you get into the level without knowing what you have to do. You have to figure it out yourself. Other than this, the difficulty in the levels is too easy, whereas boss battles are too hard. And the jump is just like that. Other than this, I recommend you to play the game on an original GBA. Because if you play it on a device with stereo speakers, you will get annoyed by the music. If you play it on a stereo device, you will hear a beat from the left speaker and some intangible music from the right speaker, making the music annoying. Oh, and the sound quality is really bad, turning into noise in some moments. But at least it's nice that in the game's 12 levels you get to play with two characters, Kong and Jason. And they control different. With Kong the controls are many times annoying, at least in my opinion, as the screen starts shaking when he jumps, and with Jason you just get some poorly executed side-scrolling levels. Overall the game is mediocre. It's playable, but I don't find it all that great. Kong King of Atlantis is a very basic platformer. You play as three characters, Kong, Jason and Lua. There's not much to say about the game, because what you see in the video is kind of all you do. There are some arena type portions, I can't lie, but basically what you will mostly do in the game is what you see in the video. Kong feels different when you control him, and Jason and Lua feel the same. And this aspect might be subjective, but the game has a mediocre feel from start to finish. You can feel that the game was rapidly thrown together just to get some money out of a license. And I have to complain about some stuff that really annoyed me. The collision gives you a hard time, since hitting too close means that you get damaged, but hitting from too afar makes your attack animation stop right before the enemy hits you. Enemies are again annoying. These green lizards have guns and the controls on your character aren't that permissive. You can't jump really high nor feel as if you have that much control over your character. You feel limited. And that makes each enemy a challenge of hit or miss. If you hit multiple times the enemy, it is down. If you don't, you lose HP. And there are as many enemies as in any side-scroller. And that won't make your life any easier. On the contrary, the game is frustrating. And enemies are weird. You get attacked by mud, and King Kong has to punch trees, which in the 2D universe can be just avoided. You get electric mud, or electric worms, or whatever these things are. So overall the game is bad. Frustrating even. And not because it was intended to be frustrating, but because the controls feel like they are limiting you. And you will see what I mean especially when you get attacked from both sides. Kong the Eighth Wonder of the World is a puzzle solving RPG. The game has free roam, with jungles and six large temples with multiple floors to roam in, and here is where the puzzle magic is happening, in the temples. Every room has a different puzzle in it, and you have to figure out each one in order to move onto the next room or unlock a door somewhere else in the temple. Most involve activating switches, rearranging blocks or hunting down and placing ceremonial items in their designated spots. And you will also solve puzzles by using three characters, either as a team or as individuals. You can control each of the three characters individually or you can control them as a team. And each character has a special ability. Carl can toss grenades, carry torches and push or pull heavy objects. 
and can scream at enemies and use her herbs to heal members of the group and Jack can attack enemies with his machete or fire his rifle or activate switches by throwing spears at them. And aside of these characters, you get occasionally to control Kong too. But as promising as the game is, there's a lot of backtracking and you get to see the same enemies over and over. Overall the game is fascinating. It tries to transform the source material of a movie into a Legend of Zelda game. It doesn't reach the fun factor or the sheer amount of content and variety the Legend of Zelda has, but it's still surprising nonetheless to see an attempt of Legend of Zelda to a tie-in game. For a tie-in game, it's amazing, but for normal game standards, the game is good at first but the backtracking and recycled enemies and locations will make the game lose points. But it's still fun, especially if you're a fan of the movie. Okay, so this was the video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to financially support me in my pursuit to review as many video games as possible, you can do that on Patreon or on the channel's membership section. You will help me a lot. If you want, you can follow me on Twitch, Instagram or Discord. And if you want to see another video of mine, just wait till I stop talking and terribly thumbnails of other videos I've made. Thanks for watching.